Do you have items like these in your home? Do you know if they're valuable or just sentimental? How do you determine which of your older possessions to keep and which to toss? And do you find yourself not throwing anything away because you're afraid you could be parting with a true treasure? Well, Dr. Lori is here with us and she'll tell you how to determine trash from treasure right now on It's Your Call. Hello everyone, it's good to have you with us. I'm Lynn Doyle and I'm very excited because I have a very special guest joining us this hour. You know her, she is Dr. Lori. She has a PhD, she's an antiques appraiser, a nationally syndicated columnist, an author, and an award-winning TV personality. Each year she evaluates 20,000 objects at more than 100 antique appraisal events nationwide. Now it's so important that she's here because in this day and age, with the economy the way it is, a lot of people like you are looking for ways to make a little extra money. Money. Could you possibly have a money maker in the attic or packed, packed away in the basement? What about your old jewelry? Is it worth something? And how about those family heirlooms that have been passed down from generation to generation? What if the current generation has no interest in them? What do you do then? Well, those are the kinds of questions that Dr. Lori is going to answer for us. And I'll tell you, I'm as interested in this as anybody. <laughs> Lori, great to have you back it's with nice us. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm great, thank Good. you. Um, I said that in this day and age, people are looking for ways to make money and you're finding in your business that there's money right under their own roof. Right, right. I always say, you know, it's in your house. You know, you have the stuff, it's in your house. And people go, no, no, I only have the junk. And this is the biggest myth around the United States, you know, and the world. You have valuable things. It is in your house. There are particular things that you want to look for. And these types of, this type of information can be crucial to you. Crucial because we're living longer. Um, we're needing, you know, some of this money for health care bills. We want to pass it down and pass the right information down to our children. We want to make good decisions before we trash it. And what should we cherish? This kind of thing. So it's very vital information. It is sentimental, but it's also monetary. Okay, well, let's talk about the monetary. Okay. How, how can you discern trash from treasure. Okay, I discern it using my background, right? <laughs> Most people go, well, you can do it because you know, you've done all these things. But basically what I want you to look for are a couple of things in your house, your house right there. You're going to find a couple of categories that will always have big value, okay? And they are original fine art, furniture, precious metals and jewelry, okay. all right? And people will say to me, Oh, those are the big three that appraisers are looking for, okay? Precious metals and jewelry, furniture and original fine art. Not prints, not reproductions, but in fact, original pieces. Furniture, you don't like Aunt Millie's sofa because it's ugly? That is not a value distinction. You can still find something, in fact, that's valuable, even if it's ugly, I always say, ugly might be your first clue, <laughs> okay? Because you may not like it. Taste and value don't always go hand in hand. It can be quite valuable. Okay, so how do we find someone to tell us whether we have a true treasure it amongst our junk, or how do we avoid being taken advantage of? Okay, because you can be taken advantage of. There are appraisers out there who are not really appraisers in my view. They are there to buy the piece from you at a low value. So you don't know how much the piece is worth, and then they come in and go, well, I'll give you 50 bucks, and they know it's worth more. So first of all, your appraiser should not, not have an interest in buying your objects. There are few appraisers like that. I'm like that, but there are very few like it. You also need an appraiser who can evaluate everything because you don't only have Hummel figurines in your house or silver in your house. You've got all different kinds of stuff in your house. Okay. So you have to think about that as well. So finding a good appraiser is as easy as basically starting here because you have me as a resource. I don't want to buy your objects. I'm not going to help you sell your objects. That's how you're going to get an honest appraisal. And your appraiser should show you sales records were similar pieces sold. Okay, and Not should... just, oh, this is what I might be able to get, or this is what they're priced selling for on eBay, or any of those kinds of statements. Because what you're really looking for, Lynn, is someone who can say, here's a sales record, here's where someone actually swiped a credit card, wrote a check, paid cash for a piece like yours. All right. That's should we get a second opinion? Uh, many times when we're having our home appraised, for example, or we're looking for a real estate agent, we, we kind of shop around. Do you do the same thing with appraisers? Very good point. It's a very good point because what they're doing with a home appraisal is they're showing you sales records of comparable homes. That's what they should do with your antiques. Okay. 
We're going to give our viewers an opportunity to be part of the program, as always. I'm asking you if you have items that you no longer want, but you're hesitant to part with. I mean, I don't know if you're like me, but I'm like that. What do you do with family heirlooms when the family no longer wants them? And how do you know when a collection or a piece really is worth something, if it's really valuable? How you and I know? If you have questions or comments, maybe you've gone through this, or maybe you're thinking about um, downsizing your house, you can email me directly at lynn at lynndoyle.net. You can also find us on Facebook, MySpace, and YouTube. And of course, we will forward all of your questions and comments to Dr. Lori as well. Um, we have gotten some response from people who uh, were curious as how to tell whether they had trash or treasure. Someone gave me a piece and said, could you please ask Dr. Lori to look at this? They found it, God knows where, probably <laughs> like down in the basement or in a box someplace. I have, I can't even tell you what this is. Okay. Um, I do know in my limited uh, expertise that it's silver and it looks like it's real silver because it's, it's quite dirty. Okay, what but, do you mean real silver? Uh, not Sterling? Not fake silver. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you mean is it sterling or solid silver? I, my, I would think that this is... What sterling I'm silver. You, what I'm making you do is what I make clients do. Okay. I'm making you actually think about your object. Okay. Or maybe it's not your object, not, obviously. But, but sterling silver, I would think, because, okay. like I said, it looks like it needs to have silver polish clean it. So okay. that's how I would differentiate from regular silver. Okay, and I'm going to put my gloves on, and I'm going to tell you a couple things you're going to look for. Okay. First of all, first thing, if it is sterling silver, mm -hmm. it indeed has to have a mark. It would be marked one of three ways. Sterling, the word sterling, mm -hmm. 925. Sterling is 925 parts per thousand pure, okay, or a little image of a lion looking left, which is called the lion passant, which is basically a symbol for I'm silver. Okay. okay? There's no mark of that sort on this piece. This piece is a piece of plate. 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 Silver plate. Silver plate. Ah, so the price just went way down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, so you know. Anything that says plate doesn't right. sound like it's expensive. Right. And it might say EPNS, <laughs> electroplated nickel silver, uh, this kind of thing. Nickel plated, silver plated, gold plated, not a good a thing. A cheap metal cheap. dipped uh, into silver. Okay. Okay, into sterling. Okay, this of course is used for our sugar cubes. Is that what that yes. is? You put the sugar cubes in, you take them out. Okay. All right. Now, sugar cubes aren't introduced until the latter part of the 19th century. So what do we have? We have a piece that dates to about 1875 to about 1910. Value on the piece? About $35. Okay. Okay. It's <laughs> well, old. Sorry, viewer. It's $35. <laughs> it's old, but not so valuable. And so I wear the gloves for all of the pieces because you don't want to transfer the oils on your hands, which will attract dirt and then decrease the value and deteriorate your objects for condition. Hmm. Condition is important. Okay, now is it worth um, trying to get somebody to buy this for $35 or do I just chuck it? Because I have to tell you, it's not my piece, it's, it's my friends, but if it were me, I'd just say Okay, you'd say forget guys. the 35 bucks. I would. But to some people, trouble. the 35 bucks is worth the trouble. Okay. So it depends on the person. Okay. We have to okay. take a quick break, but when we come back, we have all kinds of items here uh, that have been provided by various viewers and people of interest, and Dr. Lori has some of hers. We're going to take a look at those and give you an idea if you have something similar to that of how you could be making some money while just sitting right there in your living room. So stick around. We're going to tell you... Trash or treasure when it's your call continues.